Hello and good day. Welcome back to our class. This is Teacher on Andy Guzman, and our topic for today is Salaries and Wages for Business Mathematics. If we will define salary, it is a form of periodic payment from an employer to an employee which may be specified in an employment contract. On the other hand, a wage is a fixed regular payment typically paid on a daily or weekly basis made by an employer to an employee, especially to a manual or unskilled worker. Talking about salaries and wages, here are the top 10 frequently asked questions. So the first one, what is the normal hours of work in a day? Of course, you have an idea. So the normal hours of work in a day is 8. Second, is there a weekly rest day for an employee? Of course, we are not robots, right? So that is why there's a rest day of not less than 24 consecutive hours or one day for every six days of work, which should be scheduled by the employer upon consultation with the employees. Third question, how long is the meal period in a day? Hmm, quite interesting. So meal period is not less than 60 minutes or one time off for regular meals of employees which is not compensable meaning to say it is not included in the okay payment rest periods or coffee breaks running from 5 to 10 or 20 minutes shall be considered compensable working time let's move on to number 4 what is holiday pay if you say holiday pay refers to payment of the regular daily wage for any unworked regular holiday. By the way, we will discuss this on a special topic regarding overtime payment. Number five, what is night shift differential? So night shift differential refers to the additional compensation for work performed from 10 o'clock in the evening to 6 o'clock in the morning. And of course, how much is the night differential of an employee? So we have here, we have plus 10% of the hourly rate for work between 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning. Say for instance, your hourly work is 100 pesos. There's an increment of 10% for hourly rate for between okay, 10 o'clock in the evening and 6 o'clock in the morning. So that will be uh 110 pesos per hour so say if for instance you work for eight hours you have 880 for that eight hours work it seems that it is quite interesting if we will talk about salaries and wages so let's move on to the next item number seven who are entitled to 13th month pay so all the rank and file employees are entitled to receive 13th month pay regardless of the nature of their employment and irrespective of the method by which wages are paid, provided they work for at least one month during a calendar year. Number eight, when should be the 13th month pay be given? So it should be given to the employees not later than the 24th of December of every year. And for number nine, if you are about to retire, so the question is, what is retirement pay? Take note that it is the amount given an employee who has reached the age of 60 years for optional retirement and 65 years old for compulsory and who has served the company for at least five years in the service. And number 10, is of course how is the retirement benefits computed so that is the minimum retirement pay is equal to 22.5 days times daily rate times the number of years of service so again these are the top 10 salaries and wages frequently asked questions however an employee gross pay is not necessarily his take home pay take note of that so that is why his net pay is obtained after subtracting all the deductions from the gross pay. So that is why we will talk about here standard deduction. 
again, the formula is gross pay minus deduction is equal to your net pay. There are five standard deductions that we will talk about. So the first one is the SSS or GSIS contribution. The second one is the field health contribution. Third is the Pag-ibig or Home Development Fund contribution. Fourth one is the Holding Tax. And number five is optional in case this is applicable to you, which is the Loan Payment. So the first deduction is what we call social security system if you are working in a private company. So all employees in the private sector are covered by the social security system. So the rate of contribution is dependent on the employee's income range. So the contribution is shared by the employer and the employees on varying rate. So let's consider the social security system table. So we have here ER, it means this is the share of your employer. EE is the share of the employee. Say for instance, you are the worker, this is your share. Then we have the monthly salary credit. So starting from 1,000 until to the maximum of 16,000. And this is the range of compensation. For example, you, receive, you are receiving 10,000 per month. So again, this is your range of compensation from 9,750. So we have from 9,750 until 10,249.99. So what about your share as employee, employee? So again, so here is the share of the employer is... 7,000 or I mean 773.50 while the share as employee is equal to 381.50 pesos. On the other hand, if you will say the government service insurance system, all government employees are members of the GSIS and premium contributions are based on employees' monthly compensation. Unlike on the SSS member wherein the employees are only going to pay the employees' part. Here, as a government employees, you need to shoulder also the part of the employer. Let's move on to the next contribution, which is bill health. So all employees, whether of private or government entities, are eligible to be members of PhilHealth. So the coverage is basically intended to help the members during the times of sickness. The contribution is shared equally by the employer and the employee. So let's consider this PhilHealth table. Say for instance, your salary bracket is under 20, meaning to say you are receiving 27,000 until 27,999. So your salary base is 27,000. So our total monthly premium is divided equally between the employee's share and the employer's share. So, so let's zoom in that one. So the employer's share is 337 while the employer's share is 337. So again, so the premium is equally divided between the employer and the employee. So therefore, as employee, you will pay only 337 if your salary bracket is within the range of 27,000 until 27,999.99. So the next mandatory deduction that we will talk about is Home Development Mutual Fund or better known as the Pagibig Fund. So the Pag-ibig Fund was established to provide a national savings program and affordable shelter financing for the Filipino workers. So we will have our table here. So demand the compensation if you are receiving 1,500 and below, it means your employee share, your share is 1%, while the employer's is only 2%. On the other hand, if you are receiving between 1,500 and 5,000, your share is 2% while your employer's share is equal to 2%. While if you receive more than 5,000, your share is automatically 100 pesos as well as your employer's share 
as of 100 pesos. Let's move on to the last contribution so or deduction. We call this one as tax withheld. Again, tax withheld from the income of an individual arising from employer-employee relationship. For our discussion, we will only limit this one to personal income tax. And this is the revised withholding tax table as of December 1, 2018 until December 31, 2022. By the way, our discussion will also limit until for our monthly withholding tax. So, let's zoom in our table. So, on it, Guzman, do not forget to subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified about my new videos. Thank you.